Hello, Blues. Welcome to the Manchester's Blue Pod, the transfer podcast, episode number three. As again, is episode two. We're dirty bastards and have not got change in all our uh, kits. It's, it's disgusting. We're all foisting in these. I'm sure mine's going green. Uh, but welcome to episode three. Um, and today's topic is the types of players and not anything to do with Kate Winslet. If those who don't know, uh, follow the page and you'll obviously understand. Uh, but yeah, today's episode will be about the types of players that we should be looking for. There's been a lot of talk from God knows how many podcasts we've done over the past couple of years about the types of players we want to bring in. We've had countless arguments about where we want the players to come from, whether that's buying from uh, England or abroad or maybe come for a youth academy. We're talking about ages of players. Do you want to bring them through like a Jesus, buy him young and breed him into the team? Yes, he may not have been what everybody's cup of team, even to the day. Uh, but that sort of that sort of momentum. So if I was to ask you all individually, to start off with Halifax this time, what is the main type of player you want uh, for any chosen position? Let's let's just choose a random position that you want to improve. We'll go back to episode one where the position you want to improve. What type of player do you want there? Do you want an experienced, a young lad? Do you want mm. a ready-made Do you want someone to fill in the void and then eventually get there? If I'm going to just get an all-rounder, like, whatever position, <laughs> like, I know, I don't get this obsession where everybody's got to be young. Like, not everybody needs to be 18. Like, Fernandinho. I like... Pardon? Fernandinho. Yeah, I like... Like a 20, 21, like grown, in, grown into the body, good on the ball, <laughs> a ment- a, like a good Long mentality. Hair down to here, about six yeah. foot. No, but like they need to be good on ball, be able to pass, and a, a good mentality. That's, that's what you need. I mean, like, look, Torres has struggled. I mean, he scored goals and everything, but. Like he, he, I think he'll become better next season. But I feel like when we ever sign anybody, we never really sign like a ready-made player other than Diaz under Pep. Anyway, I can't think of another signing Pep's made where he were like, "Bang, that's it, his first team quality straight away." So Walker, oh Walker, yeah, yeah, Mandy. Uh, Edison, maybe. Oh, is Edison just a bit unknown? No, Edison's a bit different because he's a goalkeeper. Hmm. But what that's I mean is like, all right then. Maybe that's one thing to say, but I'm looking at Sané, Bernardo, Torres. They they all took a year to gel. Cancelo, another Mahrez. one. Mares, Mendy, sort of. He didn't he didn't come straight in, did he? He was injured, like. But anyway, so yeah, that's I, I just like a ball player, um, good good passer, and a winning mentality, like a like a Diaz mentality, champions. Well, he's, yeah. he's certainly come in and transformed the team, hasn't he? In, in, yeah. in terms of your the, the way a player takes time to adapt, is that what we always go back to? Because I, I think it's City David uh, <laughs> Prunty. Uh, I know it says Tom Brunton about I'm not Tom Brunton, by the way. Um, it, I think it's them two that always bring up, in fact, it's Laney as well, I believe, that brings up, it does take a year for a player to adapt to Pep Guardiola's style of play. Is that a factor or is that just what Pep wants to implement? Does it have any 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 acknowledgement with the type of player we bring in? Yeah, I think it does. And uh, I do look for players that I think would suit our passing style. But I think, like, we've seen Cancelo this season. I feel like I'm just going to be talking about his own team now. But we've seen, like, Cancelo this season. Like, I, thought he, I thought he just got Walker out of the team. I thought... I've never thought of having a right back play like Cancelo did. You were like the drifting in midfield. You were like having De Bruyne whipping balls in and what have you. And but you compare that to last season, he just looks shit and out of place. And I think it's because it's so demanding, and you've got to be so switched on to where he's going to be and where he's going to be. I mean, do you know? Um, do you remember when John Stones fucked up in uh, the? Uh, What's that shit trophy England came third in? Uh, na- European, the, oh, the, Nations the Nations Cup. Yeah. yeah. Nations thing. And do you remember John Stones got proper criticised for like dwelling on the ball and he got t- tackled and then they went on a score? Mm. When De Bruyne got asked about it, he went, well, what did you make of it? He went, well, that won't happen at City. He said, because he'd have had five players ready for his pass. He says, 
Edison have been ready for it. The left back, the other centre back, and the two midfielders have been in a position ready for him to pass. And I think when you come into that team, if you've not got that in your head, that's when it makes you look a bit off the pace and a bit shit, like Bernardo did, like um, well, like Cancelo definitely did. Do you get what I mean? So maybe it is just a bit of gelling, perhaps. But that's what I've come to accept as a City fan. Under no, no, I, I agree. I think this one's. Uh, I think this specific topic is about opinion, um, more than anything else. And I mean, personally, I I like my young players. I, I don't like signing players that uh, that's going to go completely against the, the way of how I think. Because obviously, with San Fernandinho when he was twenty eight, and we, we still regard him as probably one of the greatest defensive midfielders the Premier League's ever seen. You know, and. We signed him for quite a big amount at the time. I think it was, what, uh, 32 million or something like that um, when we signed him or something something around that. So I, I do agree with you. I don't think age is a big difference. I just personally like my players to be a bit of experience so they can gel straight away. Uh, but like I said, it's down to opinion. What about you, Cloud? Um I think on the age thing, I think you've really got to look at the squad and what you have. In our squad, we clearly have a lot of players who are around that 24 to 26 age range. So if you keep buying players around that similar age, they're going to age collectively together. And then you're going to have to replace not just one or two players, but a series of players over a continual amount of years. And that can be a problem because you've really got to pay out for it. That can really restrict you. So I think that's one thing to look at. Another thing is people say like, oh, Haaland, you know, if we get him, he'll be with us for the next 10 years. And I think, well, look at his agent. His players don't really stick at one club for a while. Um, so that kind of thing annoys me a little bit. I mean, give me a, a, a position and I'll try to explain like my thought process on what I would look at in terms of experience wise. Um well, did you choose on episode one defensive midfielder? Was that the yeah, your choice? Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one then. Okay. So with that, you've got to look at what you've already got. You've got Rodri. He's very press resistant. He's very great on the ball. Um, he's young. He's tall. You know, he's powerful and stuff like that. Good you looking. Don't, you, don't, <laughs> you don't want to go out and buy another Rodri because in terms of selection process, from a tactical and analytical point, I think, well, they're both very similar. Rodri's better because we paid 70 million for him and we've bought someone else in for rotation. So if he's fit, you're always going to play him. Whereas a big difference is, okay, maybe let's look at someone more like Fernandinho, not as great on the ball, not as press resistant, but he's a destroyer type defensive midfielder. And now when I'm looking at the games, I can adjust my midfield or bring someone on to change the flow with what I've got. I think that's how you need to sort of look at it. Um, in all the positions that you've got. So if I was looking at a striker, I'm not going to get more of a midfield in playmaking player like Jesus. I'm going to look to bring in a complete number nine because if I need to, I need to bring someone on to change the game, not just another similar player. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I agree. It, 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 going back to the defensive midfield, so obviously we are getting to the point where possibly even this year uh, we'll have to replace Fernandinho. And I, for me personally, we will have to replace replace that position rather than the player um is age a factor in that as well like we said Rodri is 23 24 he, he seems to be first choice now in Pep's plans does he need to implement a younger player with a different style to then maybe grow into a style that Pep would prefer or does he want that disruptor type player that will come in ready made challenge Rodri for that position regardless of age and take over it if he needed to. Based on what we've got already, I think you can kind of get away with that because I look at the midfielders that are around, like that three-man pivot. You've got Gundogan, you've got De Bruyne. You know, these are players who know the game. So he's going to be paired up with people who have been in that team. They know what's going on. And, you know, they can say, hey, look, you know, you need to be here. Hey, you know, come up. I mean, you've got that experience around him. If that wasn't there then yeah, absolutely, you've got to look into it. But I think with defensive midfield, age isn't as big of a factor um, as opposed to say, um, like we have people who are saying we should sell Mares because of his age. But we've got three wingers, Bernardo Silva, Ferran Torres and Sterling, who aren't too far apart in age. Um, so you need to sort of 
change. And especially when Sane was still here, when Sane was still here, I think Sterling Sane and Bernardo Silva had what two years between them. Oh, so well, that, yeah. that could have been a huge Sane problem same, yeah. going down the you know further down the road. No, Lady. I just want to know where Cloud has been all my life. <laughs> Every, everything he has just said. I mean, I've always had the opinion that you, you register 25 players for, for the Premier League. You have two first teams. And, you know, every single position, there is basically a polar opposite of what, what you know, left back, one who can go up and attack yeah. and cross ball, or one who can defend, you know, strikers. Your Aguero type, your Jekko type, and that, that's how I've always had. And then you have your three subs, which are your utility, game impacting kind of subs. So I've always had that mentality. Um, I was looking at the thing, and they're like, if, if it was me, per, I, I would be totally different to how I think City will be doing things. And I've tried to give my answer around what I think Pep might go for as well. Um, if it was down to me personally, I would just have a £50 million budget for the first team, buy whatever I specifically need, if there's anything urgent, and the rest, the, the, the rest of my whole the big pot, it would all be spent on the youth. And you know, like how Ajax always used to have it, it would be from the youth system all the way through to the first team. So then there isn't this 12 months bedding in bollocks. I mean, look at Mahrez. Mahrez was a well-established Premier League player. It's taken four years for him to actually show any kind of value because for the mm. first three years, he was shit. You know, the only people liked him are the Algerians. So he's, he's bollocks. But I think for City now, like today, and with the, the management and everything we've got in, I think the match age of players should be 23, personally. I think that they should come with experience, you know, within um, maybe even within Europe as well as top leagues. They should be ready-made players so they can just come in and play first team. But they should also have bags of potential. If you think a 23-year-old, I mean, you can look at Haaland, you can look at uh, Tenale, you, you can go across Europe and look at 23-year-olds. They've all been playing in Champions League. They've played in the top leagues. They're doing well. They've still got... I mean, Haaland's, you know, he's, he's got four, five... Well, Haaland's got even longer. He's got like five, six, seven years before he is arguably reaching his prime. You know, outfield mm. player, you're talking 27, 28. So if you get a player at 23 on a five-year deal, by the time they're reaching their prime, if you like, if they're not good enough for your club, you can offload them to a club that they will be all right for and you'll still get a decent amount for, rather than mm. buying a player that after five years is retiring and is just leaving for free, you're wasting your money, you know. that That's... And, I honestly think in this day and age, and the club that Man City are now, we've got the huge scouting network. I don't think that should be really that difficult to find. Mm. But again, like and I said, pers personally, like I said, it would be well, first team manager. Look at it. You know, if somebody came in now instead of Pep, so you know, Pep, Pep leaves, he's done his bit, he's won the Champions League, he buggers off. We get a new manager in. Look at the team you're inheriting. You could literally shave a chimp. Give it a suit. Just to put give a fucking bag with twenty five names and pick eleven names out. Right, there's the first team. Sort yourselves out. First name out of the hat. Your captain. Any arguments over penalties, free kicks, you sort it out. But go play your game. All these players have been kicking a ball since they could walk. You don't need somebody to come and tell these players how to play football. So fifty million, you can buy a player for your first team for fifty million in this day and age, Premier League. You know, if if you really needed somebody. The rest, it should all be thrown into the youth squad. And none of this, all right, we, you know, we're going to pull players from the youth team to to sit on the bench while we go and play a, a meaningless game in the Champions League because it's great for them to sit and watch. They can fucking sit and watch it back in the training academy on DVD and go through all the little bits bit by bit. You know, I want them to be pressing, you know, they're in, they're in the, um, or whatever that auto windshield trophy called now, you know, for the League One, League Two and Yeah. Go and win that. We man fucking say we should be winning everything. Especially domestically. We had the formidables. The only one we didn't win was that. And I think we got to the semi final and lost to Sunderland on penalties or something. We should be yeah. winning that. Sorry. Invest in the invest in the youth team. And then when the managers are right, okay, we need some little well, let's have a look at what we've got. We've got all these 20, 21 year olds. Promote them. Start bedding 
I want to, like, I, I get what you're saying, Laney, but, like, when we had Nader Manure laugh, on, <laughs> no, when we had Nader Manure on, like, an ex-footballer, he said the thing, he said, but well, it's right, there's no reserve, re, reserve football. I don't know why I said reserve football. I don't know why I said it's so weird then. <laughs> there's no reserve football anymore. So the kids are playing against kids. Do you get what I mean? And he says the, the standard isn't isn't what you think no. it is. Just because the bag in like three three in, <laughs> half of them has got school in the morning and that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not what it what you what it used to be. Like yeah. when you talk to older players, reserve football, if you're playing reserve football at 17, you're playing against Carlos Tevez coming back from injury. You're playing yeah. against yeah. so and so. Do you know what I mean? You're playing against men. And it's I think now under twenty threes, isn't it? That's the problem. Yeah, that, that, yeah. So the only the only men they get to play against is in the cup. Yeah, and it's, how many get what a dozen games at most a year? I, and I think you know, it's, it's bollocks. I know you you're saying that, but I don't get why they're taking players on these tours and that. I genuinely think it is to weed out the like. I don't know if you remember Jesus Navas used to be scared to leave his house. Uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't go abroad, could he? Uh, and I genuinely think it's to say, come on, you're coming away. You're stopping in this hotel. Somebody's going to shit in your pillowcase. Well, That's no, what I'd be doing. The, anyway. the, the, the one I was referring to was the, uh, the Champions League game that we had at home. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who it was we were playing. And it ended up like nil-nil. And we had some... Oh, like, oh. Was it Porto? And we yeah, had four of our EDS players sat on the bench... Not a single one of them got any game time, and was it either the day before or the day after, whatever? It was the um, yeah, yeah, I it, agree it was that cup, and we went out, and it's like, hold on, if those players was in that team, we'd have probably won, and they'd have been playing more games against men, not just sat watching a Champions League game, which they've mm. already done before. They're already, it's not like they're not involved with these players. They learned nothing from that game, and nil nil against Porto on a Wednesday night was fucking useless. Oh, and that's I, fu- I, that's my, you know. I I agree with you. Uh, I just, I, I mean, we've argued about this loads of times, so I'm not going to get into <laughs> it, but I just feel like we've got to get away from that that mindset of bringing academy players through because I just don't think it works like no. it used to. Like and I said, think, it's never going to happen. It's the ideal. I, it's the, it's, the, the, it's I, the ideal world, but it's never going to happen. And I think that's across the board. I don't think it's just us. I do think that's across the board. If you actually look into it, Barcelona don't do that anymore. Yeah, you and, know Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, even Bayern Munich are playing Bayern players and shit now. Compared to, I do want to pick up on the two names you mentioned. I mean, you're a big fan of Haaland, uh, and you obviously want an Ali as well at some point. If if we ever went there. They are the different kettle of fish for me because those two came from teams and they're start, now, now starting to make the name in Dortmund and AC Milan respectively. But they came from teams that could get away with bringing new players through because they're not expected to really achieve anything. You know, it's, it's Dortmund Europe, was. Please, pardon? I would have said Dortmund was. I mean, Tonali's now yeah, at AC Milan. Salzburg. You know, yeah, he went from Salzburg to Dortmund, but like Dortmund. Yeah. If he were well, that, a Dortmund fan, you'd he made his name at Salzburg. He, he was able to yeah. be given the chance at a young age at Salzburg to bang in these goals. Yeah, but that is a sh- that is a poor league. Have you seen that meme when the <laughs> the sub comes off and the other they've got swapped shirts in Austrian like in Austrian cup? It's like they're playing against Salzburg and they're swapping shirts coming on and off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but no, I, I get I get what you mean by you want to implement more money in the youth academy. Um, there is just a limit for me about that because, yes, I'd prefer to see a hell of a lot more. I do think we've had a few youth academy come through and they've been sort of whitewashed, you know, that they've not been no. highlighted as the type of player that could easily come and disrupt the team. Everyone took the piss out of me when I said uh, Tozin. I'd like to see Toss in this first team. Yes, yeah. he's playing well, for a Fulham team that's eventually going to get relegated in my eyes. But he's been arguably Fulham's best defensive player consistently this year. And I could easily yeah. see him being part of our City team. A good good collective of decent players around him. I think he can skyrocket. But I think that's the problem with our youth academy. We've had so many years of non-success. Now we're starting to see little snippets of the pure greatest, i.e. Phil Foden. These other players that have been out on loan, and you know my views on loan system, I think the loan system we do with our club is... Well, 
Um, yep. <laughs> I just let, think uh, players could be implemented a hell of a lot better. Right, I'll use Inacio as a, as a case against that, right? Kelechi's having a very good season, and I, I said it in the same, I'd have probably bought him back for the price, only because it's the price, but he's gone that anyway. But could you have waited that long if you were at City? Could you have waited for him to take four years to score 14 goals? He's only scored so 20 Premier doing League. When he first started at City, he was doing better than Mason Greenwood. And yeah, then we yeah sold he him. was, but so if look, we'd look have him... <clears throat> Yeah, it's if and buts, but I'm going on what he did at Leicester. And he wasn't a bad Leicester side. You can't say it was a bad Leicester side he went Okay. Mares. And Mares did. came the other way. Look at what Mares did at Leicester, Leicester. And then look at how shit he was for certain. We've yeah. waited four it, years for a £70 million Algerian sack of shit to pull his yeah, finger out and say, OK, I'm going to score He's been here three years. He's been here three years. And he's won four, five trophies. Mares. He's named in the squad. <laughs> yeah, he's had 10 goals, 10 assists, <laughs> both Carson's previous two trophies. seasons. Yeah, Scott Carson's a fucking boy. <laughs> Let's not get that mixed up. <laughs> anyway, by the by, we're on about subject, but I, 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 I like the loan thing. I feel like we've gone away from what we've started talking about. So to bring it back to the transfer and what I'd want, I'm very sceptical about City signing ready-made stars. I don't know how you feel about that, Cloud. And that is what's putting me off Harlan, who I think is a top player. And I, I, my heart says, yeah. I mean, my heart says, I want him. But my brain's like, what if he come and flopped with a he big goes, price tag? He's no Malin. Right. People right. tell me... On to, sorry, go on, Cloud. No, no, carry on, carry on. I was just going to say, from what, what Halifax was saying about a ready-made star, let's, let's go back to when the takeover first happened. If you think... Um, Yaya Torre. I wouldn't have said he was a star. You know, he, I mean, Barcelona were throwing him out. He was ready-made. We made, we've always said this. We we don't buy world-class players. We, we, we buy, yeah. you know... Yeah, but that's them. what I'm... I think Harlan when... still has a lot more to improve on. That's what... Yeah. That's why I'd say get him now. Yeah, he has. But what I, what I mean is... Like, Yaya Torre didn't have 100,000 Twitter accounts like Harlan 011 with loads of pictures of him. <laughs> we haven't got this uh, hype. We well, don't buy a hype, a hype up player, should I say. That's what I meant. So, go on then, Kyle. What are we saying? With Harlan, like, people tell me that we need to get him as a ready made star and everything like that. And my response is always the same we're not going to get him. But more importantly, Manchester City, the team who are winning the Premier League, the Carabao Cup and the Champions League this season don't need to buy anyone. They can buy who they want. But I want to go back to what we were talking about, you know, like the youth system and stuff like that. Our youth system is a revenue stream. So when we've got like the pre-tours and the players come on, it seems like nonsense. That's a job interview for them, but it's not a job interview with City. Mm. It's to show other clubs. And that's what, you know, that's what we're doing. It's a very... They're never going to get the chance to shine. But when people are saying, oh, you know, we should have kept, uh, you know, Kalichi and stuff like that. I don't think Kalichi would have been the same player if we held on to him because he wouldn't have been getting the game time. He was hardly getting game time at Leicester. So how are you going to get game time at City? I don't know. But in terms of buying ready-made stars, again, I think it depends what we have. I don't think Jesus is ready to take over that mantle right now. So in that particular role... Maybe not a star, but we do need someone with experience. So although a lot of people turn their nose up at it, injury is what bothers me with this particular name. But when people say, would you have Danny Ings? I say, yeah, I would. Because I think he's reasonable. And barring injuries, I think he could bring a lot to us. So I'm trying to get away from the whole Harlem because I don't think it's going to happen. But there are other players out there who may not grab the headlines, but they'll be phenomenal players for the club if you use them right. You know what's going to happen, don't you? We're going to sign Danny Ings and Manuel's going to sign Darwin. And Danny Ings going to outscore him for the next two seasons. <laughs> 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 yeah, mate. Well, well, if anybody's got anything else to add on this particular subject, no? It's got to be the I'm first time I've heard Laney quiet. Oh, no, you have to break it. There was a five-second period there where Laney was quiet. I, I thought I home. found love and now I've lost it because Cloud's just fucked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sulking now. 
All I can say is, remember um, that, that Sergio Aguero, mm. he'd come from an arsehole, no league in Argentina, went to Atletico Madrid, was tearing Spain up, and then we bought him. And look at what he's done now. I can't believe Cloud even mentioned the Champions League word because he's been not there yet. So I was like, no. But it's just like, like I said, you look around Europe, the, the world class striker, you know, you've got Zlatan, you got Aguero, um, or the Griezmann. You know, you've got all these. Haaland is what? Is he 19, 20? 20. 20, 20. He's, he's got a long way to go yet. I think he could be our next Aguero, personally. A long, long way to go. Big, big shoes to fill. The only time would tell. Of course, uh, we'll cover that on the transfer podcast if it ever did happen. But I don't think we'd uh, splash the cash out for that. And I don't think uh, the City board would relish the idea of having uh, Mina Raiola as part of a uh, agency network around City. I think there'll be a little bit more disruption if it, if it was to come. But hey, what do we know? But yeah, if anybody's got anything else to add, that'll be the end of episode three. Thank you for joining us. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, thank you for putting up with us and we'll see you for episode four. Which question. Is oh, sorry. sorry. Last one question. It's just, popped in. It's, just po- it's just popped in. Um, we've all just been speaking then about like what, what we'd look for in a transfer and like, what we'd buy sort of thing. What's the opinion though when it comes to freebies? Take them all day. Regardless of it, you know, you know, it's... Regardless of age or and if as long as they fit the bill. Can't just yeah. take any one. I mean that that um, yeah. I think it's Craig Lavelle who plays for Colchester He's a free transfer at the end of the year. I don't, don't like <laughs> that. Uh, you, you, you've got to you've yeah. got to keep it to uh, the moment, but I think, I think about the most... Danny Alves rumours. Who's that? Out, the Danny Alves rumours and he was out of contract. That's why that takes me back to now. <laughs> yeah, remember those days. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it's a big one. You know that that um, that Argentinian guy in Spain. I can't remember his name. The little, the little fella, Alan Dor winner. But the, that guy, the Messi. Oh, He's Messi Lingard. <laughs> He's not signed a contract. You know, it was just a, it was just I... all the the question on freebies. Well, it's, it's like I say, as long as they're uh, kept. Within reason. You know, Let's save this to... for the next episode. Wrap it up, damn lads. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll see you in episode four, Blues. Take care.